Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Super and welcome to the Saturday Surface Interval in association with the Two Minute Foundation. Before online conspiracy theories on your uncle's Facebook page, we had myths and superstitions. There are a few myths about scuba diving around that a lot of people still believe. Some of them quite localized to certain areas, so some of these I may mention, uh, you might not have even heard of them. Which is a good thing, actually. We don't need silly myths about diving putting others off becoming scuba divers. So here are five crazy myths about scuba diving. One fear that I often see online and when talking to the uninitiated is that sharks, they're, they're just out to kill you. You'll, you'll suddenly run out of air in the middle of a dive and drown. You'll get trapped in one of those giant clams from cartoons. And if, if none of those happens, then you'll just die from the bends or something. Sure, there are some dangerous aspects to scuba diving. You can't deny that. But only when you go beyond your training or do something stupid. Most dives are luckily quite dull when it comes to incidents and divers actually getting hurt. It's, it's actually incredibly rare. Media is the most common culprit for this. And I'm not here saying that we need to defund the mainstream media or anything, but movies and TV shows, they're there to be entertaining. So they make things exciting and entertaining. Sharks in movies, they, they always have vendettas for any humans in the water. When in the real world, they, they couldn't care less about us, and more often than not, sharks will swim away from us because they don't like the noise that we make. Running out of air in the bends, you'll all know, is actually quite tricky if you simply just pay attention to your gauges. Scuba diving isn't as radical or as dangerous as many still believe it to be. It's incredibly safe, and the primary focus of all of our equipment and procedures is actually safety. So it's really not that dangerous. In certain circles, and luckily enough these circles are getting smaller and smaller, it's bad luck to set sail on a Friday. That's the day that Jesus was crucified. That being said, Thursday apparently is a bad day as well. That's Thor's day. There, there might be storms if you set sail on a Thursday. Red sky in the morning, sailor's warning. That one actually is quite often true in my experience. Um, if there's a red sky in the morning, then often the weather gets a little bit nastier towards the end of the day. But it wouldn't make me skip a day's diving. I tend to check the weather in advance and then let that decide, or the weather reports. But red sky in the morning, and, and I often then take a look at my, my phone or something, keep my eye on the horizon um, to just double check it's gonna be all right. There are a bunch of superstitions inherited from savers. Some make sense. Well, no, actually, very few of them actually make any sense, to be honest, um, to like, no whistling on board a boat, um, that can actually begin a storm. That one's proper chaos theory in <laughs> that theory. Um, sharks following the ship mean that there's gonna be an inevitable death, someone's gonna die on board. Um, flowers are unlucky, bananas are unlucky if you bring them on board a ship. Um, if someone calls you Jonah, you are the bad luck person, you're a certain bad luck person, you, they often refer to you as Jonah. Um, along with redheads uh, and priests, I think I read somewhere, they're, they're bad luck on board a ship. Sorry. Um, I don't think you'll ever be turned away if you specifically like charted a boat um, that specifically leaves on a Friday, or if you turn up with red hair, I don't think you're gonna get turned away, but don't take it personally if in some remote area, wherever you're diving, the boat crew suddenly get nervous or don't like the fact that you've got a flower in your hair or you've got a banana hanging out of your kit bag. Granted, I'm not the best example to disprove this myth, but there is a strong belief that scuba diving is just a men's activity or that it's just all men that go scuba diving. But there are plenty of female divers out there. When I used to teach, it wouldn't be unusual for a woman gasp to be on a training course. If anything, it would have been weird if there wasn't a woman. Um, I can't really remember any dive courses I ever taught without a female diver or a student. Um, nor the last time I was even on a dive boat without any women. It's, it's unusual to not see a woman in my experience. Yes, there are times when there aren't female divers about, that there's always gonna be that ratio um, at certain dive sites and it is rare when women outnumber men to be honest um, but 
they are still out there and some of the best scuba divers I know are women. I don't think it's 50-50 quite yet as far as training. Um, the last numbers I saw, it was still about one third of new divers are female compared to two thirds male. Um, but equipment is becoming sort of better and better for women. Gone are the days when you just had to settle for just this unisex equipment, which is basically just a men's BCD just with a unisex badge on it. And the manufacturers are getting a bit more creative with colors and styles. Uh, it's not just baby blue or pink. That's what makes it female equipment anymore, that they're a bit more modern today. This is another one that keeps coming up in conversation. Oh, but there's nothing to see down there and it's all dark and cold, surely? No. People often see all of the marketing images and it's all board shorts and bikinis and clear blue water. The only experience they ever have of cold water is just looking over a pond or a lake whilst walking their dog and they assume that all cold water is just this thick green soup. And sometimes it is, let's be honest. But if you pick the right dive site and the right time, you can get some amazing visibility. And I don't want to look at something 40 meters over there in the distance. I'm actually looking at this right here. So I don't need 40 meter viz. And there is wildlife and things to see in cold waters, and it can be vibrantly colourful as well. I found nudibranchs off the coast of Scotland, starfish up in the Arctic Circle. The colours that you'll find in the sponges and the soft corals, yes, we even have coral reefs here in cold waters. And if you're cold during a dive, then you're just not wearing the right exposure protection. If someone came up to you and complained about being cold in the winter time or in a cold country, and all they're wearing is just a thin cardigan next to you in a thick like three layer setup, then yeah, of course you're cold. Put something appropriate on and then come back to me. If you had to do your 100th dive naked, most of the divers outside of the tropics wouldn't survive to make it to their 101st dive. The 100th dive naked dive thing, I don't really know where it started, but I imagine it was just some of the, the old guard just making fun of some of the new divers, um, see if they can get them to actually do it. Um, or they just wanted to get a better look at one of the lady divers. And it just became a thing apparently, but trust me, I didn't do mine news. Um, I was wearing the appropriate exposure protection here in the UK, believe it. Um, you don't have to do your 100th dive nude. Um, you can, if you really want to, just make sure that you're not breaking any indecent exposure laws. Um, getting nicked and then hauled off to the local police station, cold, wet and naked, isn't really my idea of a good dive. Um, and definitely make sure that you do not get lost at sea. Um, the news cameras are often all over recovered lost scuba diver reports. And that is a tough one to explain why you kept your BCD, your fins and your dive computer, but somehow lost your wetsuit on the dive. Bottom line is no one can force you to do it if you don't want to and just own it. No. I won't be diving naked. I don't care what Reddit post or dive forum you read, heard it on. I'm not going to do it. So there were a few scuba diving myths we need to dispel. I don't think Hollywood is ever going to let go of sharks being scary. That's one of their tropes nowadays. Superstitious omens. They're quite tricky to remove from the zeitgeist along with cold water bad. Uh, that's quite tricky to get out of people. But what can we do to, or sorry, what we can do to encourage more divers, especially women, and show our dive community, you know, is to basically show our dive community is a happy and welcoming place and try not to scare them off or belittle any new ones for asking questions. Don't forget to check out simplyscuba.com for all of your scuba gear. There's going to be plenty of links down in the description below. We have all sorts of plenty choices for the lady diver along with men's equipment as well. As I said, there's links down in the description below for all sorts of gear. Thank you for watching, everybody, and of course, safe diving. Yeah.